Why was that episode of What If Hella Good? I'm thinking it's because we got Hella of Hella. What If Hella Found the Ten Rings? I just finished watching it, so you know we gotta talk about it. Quick spoiler warning that I am gonna be recapping the entire episode and give my honest spoiler filled thoughts of the episode. So if you're not trying to be spoiled, make sure you drop a like, follow, but come back later because I need to hear your thoughts. We start off with a similar montage as Thor Ragnarok with Odin and Hella conquering the Nine Realms. But in this universe, when Hella wanted to conquer more and Odin said what they have conquered is enough, instead of banishing her to hell, he humbled her like he did Thor in the first Thor movie, stripping her. He did what? Of her power and her helmet, banishing her to Earth doing the same thing so whoever finds this helmet will have the power of Hela. But the helmet didn't land in New Mexico. It landed in China and right into the hands of the Ten Rings. When Wenwu and his men discover the helmet, that's when Hela shows up with telling them, ah, no touchy, that's mine. Which is when she tries to get active but her helmet doesn't appear. And I saw a lot of people complaining about this MCU humor joke like, bro, get over it. It's not that serious. Anyway, Hela overstays her welcome. She starts beating the dog shit out of all of Wenwu's men, even pulling off this move from Ragnarok until Wenwu's like, all right, I've seen enough and ring cuffs her. Hela begins talking shit to Wenwu being like, man, if you didn't have those rings and I had my helmet, I'd be putting a pause on you right now. So when Wenwu being the kinky bastard that he is, says, all right, go do it. She's no longer worthy. Despite her failure, Wenwu still invites her into his home, even giving her a nice pretty dress. She says won't be able to see his bloodstains on, but he says it's for marriage. She spits her drink out. So Wenwu's like, nah, nah, not a marriage, just an alliance. We're both super powerful. Let's go rule the world. Similar to what she did with her father, but not that similar because Wenwu is a conniving little horny bastard. Bro be falling in love with every first woman he ever meets. But as they're about to kiss, she starts banging his head into the fucking ground. shit was so fun. With Wenwu unconscious, his men come in and Hela is forced to escape. But even when Wenwu gains consciousness, he's like, bring her alive. I still like her. Hela falls into an empty room where she's greeted by Morris from Shang-Chi and he tells her that he knows a way out. As they escape on horseback, Morris tells Hela that he knows of some people that can help her and he leads her to the entrance of Tai Lo. But uh, this is the forest that kills people. But they do narrowly escape and enters Tai Lo, which is when she gets immediately attacked by the protector of Tai Lo, Jia Yi. Heimdall becomes concerned because he can no longer see Hela and he alerts Odin of this. Hela wakes up at a temple in Tai Lo. Hela asks them if they would want to help her in her quest of darkness, which they say you can't be darkness with more darkness, which is when Hela asks to be trained into the ways of the light and we even get a shot of the great protector. Heimdall tells Odin that Wenwu has the ten rings, which are powerful enough to kill a guy. So he decides the owner of the Ten Rings must be stopped. Back with Hela training on Tai Lo, she's struggling because she's obviously doing this for the revenge aspect, the darkness, not the light, which is when Jai gets into Hela's head. We get a cute little core memory of a young Hela and Fenris. I need that dog. And it's actually the exact moment that Odin chose Hela's path for her. And she realizes that she never even really got to choose her own path. And with this newfound perspective, she begins to train harder until she's finally able to master the ways of Tai Lo. But during one of her meditation sessions, she sees that her father has returned to Earth. As we see Odin and the Asgardians attacking the Ten Rings compound, Hela shows up to defend the Ten Rings and confront Odin. And of course, Wen Wu's happy to see her. And bro, when I tell you this is one of the hardest fight scenes in What If, maybe even the entire MCU, I was eating it up. There's something so dope about seeing Hela and Wenwu teaming up to fight Odin, a literal all god. Odin was beating the shit out of Hela. He hit her with a fistful of domestic violence, but Odin is ultimately defeated, which is when Hela offers a helping hand. But boom, Odin hits her with domestic violence cousin, child abuse. He's kind of angry that she's lost her executioner ways, but she reveals in her time on Earth she's found a newfound appreciation for life. And she becomes worthy again and her helmet returns to her. And in the process of that, she even gets a brand new cool costume. I ain't gonna lie, it's kind of tough. Angelic. But Odin is so impressed with Hela's transformation, she surpassed him and Odin offers her his throne but she only agrees to take it if they undo all the conquests they've done up to this point. When Wu stands behind her they form an alliance of heroes that protect it across the cosmos and guess who their next target is. Man Thanos can't catch a break in what if. All in all I thought this was another very solid episode. It mainly tells me that I need Shang-Chi 2 now and I need Wen Wu to fight Iron Man but it also gave me a greater appreciation for Cate Blanchett's Hela. Like now we kind of understand why she was the way she was in Ragnarok and now I kind of want her back too because it's Cate Blanchett. Yeah, so far, 7 for 7, what if? I'm really loving season 2. I think it's way better than season 1. But let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. And as always, like and follow for more.